What's happening everybody? Trey here and today at Reactions to the Classics, it is time for a reaction to a group I'm not familiar with whatsoever, so that's always fun to just kind of jump in blind here as we're going to be looking at David Devant and his spirit wife and the record Work, Love, Life, and Miscellaneous. So uh, I want to shout out our longtime patron, friend, and supporter of the channel, Ian, for suggesting this for us to do today. Ian always also supplies some fantastic write-ups uh, at the front and also with each song and uh, that's no different today so let's just jump into Ian's write-up of the group. Ian noted this is the band I've seen more than any other and one for which I have had an enduring affection since I first heard them in the mid 90s. They're still actively producing new music and performing live. They are always experimenting with, with what a pop band is. The creativity of their performances is refreshing and they're best known for being the house band of the TV series Asylum. But despite lots of media exposure, their catchy tunes, loyal fans, fan base and great sense of fun, they have never been commercially successful. Odd for a pop rock band to be so unpopular, but me and my friends from college, which uh, for us in the States is going to be 11th and 12th grade, uh, not uh, the proper college, which is, I know, university um, for uh, a lot of Europe, uh, they loved them back then. Heavily influenced by the Bowie sound, their second album is my favorite musically, but their debut, which we're doing today, Work, Love Life, Miscellaneous, really grabbed me. The songs can be silly and fun, but the melodies are up there with any of the competing 90s bands and Ian also noted that he was uh, once at a gig at the famous 100 Club in London and chatting to what I thought was another fan but turned out to be the teenage son of Foz who was James Foster and he described his dad's band as a bit of a joke band it made me question if a band that has fun and entertainment at its heart is any less worthy than a straight face serious rock band the band has brought massive amounts of enjoyment to me and my friends over the years and I think the songs stand up artistically so I would summarize my feelings that they are a uh, fun but uh, not a joke and this album is the most upbeat of all four of their records and I hope you all enjoy well uh, that is a great write-up and uh, you know kind of firing uh, firing me up here Ian and that's a, a interesting discussion point that we can maybe have later on about uh, the whole you know joke band fun band any less uh, you know t take them any less serious than a, a group that really uh, tries to, to put their serious face on so to speak but this album also went to number 70 in the UK and interestingly enough I was wondering okay David Devant no, nobody in the groups named that that is uh, the name actually of an English uh, magician and a uh, early film exhibitor David Devant who was born in 1868 and died in 1941 one. So, uh, man, taking it way back here. In the current lineup, we noted the Foz. Like, each of these guys has a different nickname. So, Foz is James Foster, who's on guitar. We have the Colonel, uh, Jim Egerton, who's on bass. And then Professor Rimshot, Graham Carlo, who is on drums. And then our uh, main man is going to be the Vessel, Mikey Georgeson, who is on lead vocals, keyboards, and also hops on guitar. So, uh, all that to say, man, we're going to get diving into this record. And it's a bit neat because Ian, uh, for four of these wants us to look at the video so get a little audio visual experience going up today and that's what we're actually going to do with the first tune ginger here uh ginger ian noted is a fantastic and most commercially successful song from the band not my personal favorite only given it a seven but my favorite part of the song is the video which captures some of the performance art feeling of their live performances so we're going to cue that up i'm going to also have lyrics up for every tune you know how we do here and then at the end uh, give my overall uh, score as well as favorite tracks and if this gets copy written on youtube there will be a link in the description to vimeo that has the full video with music it's sometimes up in the air what gets blocked and what doesn't here on youtube but, but uh, all that to say, man, enough talk. I'm looking forward to diving into this. Thanks again to Ian, and uh, let's kick this off with Ginger. I'm already getting uh, that artsy vibe <laughs> coming off uh, just from these opening seconds. Does all the world seem behind you? You must be ginger. And when you walk down the street, do people tread on your heels? That authentic British voice right there.
definitely has that upbeat sound you want for an album opener. Boss getting after it. Oh, now we're grating some cheese over this man's head. Getting a little trippy 60 psychedelia flavor on that. <laughs> Alright, Ginger kicking us off here, and uh, I, I loved loved that video and how artsy it was, splitting up into the quadrants towards the end. It gave a bit of a, a 60s psychedelia throwback feel, what you see on Strawberry Fields Forever, or even the cover of uh, Piper at the Gate of Dawn by Floyd. And, um, you know, really enjoyed the guitar work in there by the Foz. I also um, thought that, uh, th that it, it was a very catchy tune that... Felt authentic to that uh, 90s time. I, I didn't mention at the start, this record did come out in 97. So, um, you know, definitely had a bit of that uh, Britpop, I think, sensibilities to it. Um, and uh, and just being able to blend that with the artsy nature of the video, I think, uh, shows how, how um, you know, you can pull off both. Um, being uh, being commercially viable in your sound while also uh, maybe staying true to some of that artistic merit that you like. And I enjoyed the lines, do you feel born out of time? Does all the world seem behind you? You must be ginger. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, uh, a ginger, not not a slur today, but, you know, they kind of a, uh, a put down to, to the redhead. So it, it is kind of uh, interesting to, to go back and, and see how this was uh, used in 97. Um, he says, ginger, it's not the same for you. It's another life maybe we'll all be ginger and free so I like that that you know word is used as a uh, an uplifting or a word to uh, uh, you know aspire to man let's be ginger and free and, and be who we are and uh, kind of uh, go back to, to the best of how it was it feels uh, back in the day uh, he notes and when they shout freckle face it makes you feel out of place you're in the dentist chair open wider uh, have you got plans in your head you wish they'd all go drop dead because they don't understand they think you're from another land so I just like this I, I think a feeling for people who maybe uh, maybe feel a bit outcast from society this or that um, here uh, David Devant and company are noting that hey it's it's totally cool and even better to be a bit different man a bit out there be a, a bit ginger if you will um because man that's how you are truly yourself and free so good way to start this off man and now we're gonna queue up miscellaneous track number two ian says the title track love some of the lyrics like people in glass houses seldom throw parties was one lyric that struck me on first listen making me smile and sticking in my head for 25 years solid song ian's going in eight on this one well Let's get after it. It's work, love life, miscellaneous. That's all the extraneous details you can't live without. Shadow of a doubt And when you 
you can ask a stupid question, get a stupid answer. Are you the singer? No, I'm a dancer. People in glass houses seldom throw parties. That is a great line. Mikey's voice on this track, man. Yet again, very catchy, great guitar tone. I the boss. miscellaneous uh, the title track did not disappoint man yet again i thought uh, i thought uh, um, mikey's voice was uh, fantastic on on this one lent a bit of that angst and uh, just uh, yearning and, and searching that was uh, apparent in the lyricism and yet again the foz is a, a guitar tone um a quite uh, quite upbeat quite a, a catchy uh, tune just in general man it, we start off with the uh, title of the record it's work love life miscellaneous that's all the uh, extraneous details you can't live without um, it's up to you which way you place them but make sure you don't forget one because if you do you're gonna be found out without a shadow of a doubt great rhyming in there and really playing off that word miscellaneous you know you, in, in your life you got your work you got your love life and, and all this miscellaneous stuff surrounding it uh, you know maybe surrounding what's truly important uh, some would say in their love life and work um, but uh, this guy he um, he wants to know a little bit more about uh, this miscellaneous after that great line people in glass houses seldom throw parties he says and when you finally find, find, uh, find out rather what this mess is all about won't you come around and give me some of those extraneous details? I can't live without. Um, just a, uh, a, yet again, another catchy tune right here. Uh, I think I like that more than Ginger, actually. So uh, now, y'all, we're up to track number three. We're up to a good start on this record, and now we're going to Lie Detector. Ian notes uh, another catchy song with simple but clever and amusing lyrics, and one of my favorite uh, David DeMant and his uh, Spirit Wife songs in general. I'm giving it a nine. Wonderful video to go along with this one. Great single, fast and instantly likable. So we are going to be queuing up the single for the, uh, the video for this, and uh, let's get to it. I'm already digging the, uh, the color in this video. <laughs> that orange popping. Man, these choruses just soar, man. They told me that the love comes in many guises. Well, she can see through walls and see through disguises. So it's no good praying or crossing your fingers, because the smell of a lie, it always lingers. Even on the breath of rock and roll, say good time. 
again, another uh, kind of quirky, artsy video that works well. <laughs> I'm making that dude in the, uh, the green shirt on the, uh, what is that called? Microfish, I believe? I'm showing my age here. Detector went yet again a very creative video right there. I thought that uh, the use of uh, the dude with the magnifying glass, you know, that was kind of one of the mainstays. I think those things are called the microfish, where you used to have them at the library. So I'm told. I'm too young for that, people. But uh, I thought that was neat, and um, you know, the whole thing where uh, Mikey was like taking off his mask a little bit throughout the video, and then at the end, you had the girl come up who was indeed the lie detector. She took her mask off, and what was it? It was Mikey staring at himself, man. <laughs> I thought I thought that was a quite clever and a bit of a twist at the end there. Musically, yet again, very catchy. I'm noticing just three songs in that these choruses uh, are quite uh, are quite soaring and um, just uh, immediately accessible and uh, one you just uh, can can memorize quite quickly. Very pop centric and um, I, I just uh, I, I love uh, Mikey's voice on uh, on these tunes as well, man. I think he he brings a, a certain type of charm to these lyrics uh, as well um really just uh, um you know describing this uh this girl who's a lie detector and is gonna sniff out a uh, sniff out any nefarious uh things that you're uh, saying pretty much um so uh yet again man really cool and i'm glad that uh we uh, looked at the video for that one and now we're gonna move on up to the last ever love song um, and this one, Ian says, initially this was the only skip song for me on the album, but it grew on me till I quite enjoy it. Only a six, the lyrics are more about being in a band that's on its way down, having one last hurrah, and the interesting instrumentation and expansive sound at the end drag it back from the skip realm. So uh, let's see what we got here. It stirs the emotions a little. Sends a shiver. Get a uh, bit of an accordion sound to start us off. Didn't expect that. The last ever pop star was not the first choice. He owns a Wamerana and a second-hand Rolls-Royce. He knows a lovely lady, she'd like to wear his ring. You can definitely feel that Bowie influence no on this track. no one can resist him when he starts to sing. The last ever love song, the last of the night. The last ever love song will make it all right. This morning a fan letter came through Play once more. 
and knew his job was done because the last of a love song was the last number one. That's the last. I am kind of digging this uh, this story from the, the perspective of a band that's of the night. about to hang him up, you know. One last hurrah, as Ian noted. definitely took the song off a notch for me too. And it's ever love song um I, I can tell just right off the gate this is definitely the uh, you know biggest one i think could grow on me of these first four uh tunes whereas the first three songs were immediately accessible and uh, very you know pop centric this you know throws it back a, a accordion um going as almost the main instrument in those first couple minutes before we you know bring back the the guitar uh heavy and, and the drums heavy which uh that last minute really did take the song up a notch for me did enjoy the uh the concept of a, uh, a band that's on its way out hitting that last ever love song so to speak um, he notes uh, because the last ever love song was the last number one you know noting getting fan mail um, you know saying oh it, last pop star please play once more and so we took the final curtain and knew his job was done an interesting perspective especially from a band that themselves were only on their second record so uh, kind of a unique perspective uh, with that uh, won't end up on my favorites or anything but a bit of a change of pace doesn't uh, doesn't hurt anything on a, a record that's uh, you know 12 songs you know, we're four songs through in here, kind of took it back a notch, uh, got a bit more serious in tone, and um, you know, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what we got in the coming tunes, man. Because next up we got I think about you, which I know Ian's a massive fan of. He said this track is pure pop perfection, wonderful storytelling and tongue-in-cheek lyrics, and Mikey goes all out with the vocals. The all-in production creates a busy but fantastically over-the-top sound. Uh, yet they still know when and how to strip the sound back. It's a great example of a fun song being brilliant without being overly serious, like a McCartney song at his best, walking the tightrope between the absurd and the sublime. It feels silly to give this a 10, but I can't not and remain true to myself. Hey, man, I always tell people, Ian, if it's a 10 to you, it's a 10 to you. You gotta, you gotta rep it. So uh, let's uh, see what we got with that right up. I'm excited. Oh.
pot right there. So catchy. It's so I'm not being funny when I call you honey. It's from the heart, so play a part in making my egg runny. Coming in, man, bringing it. I, I Ian was not wrong about how uh, how how pop and just catchy the song was, man. Immediately accessible within the first minute, and uh, Mikey, man, really was uh, able to show a bit of range in his vocal. A couple high notes in there that he held for a bit that uh, you know I hadn't seen from him yet, and uh, so I thought that was notable. I think uh, the Colonel coming in with his bass work at the end, where uh, they strip back uh, that sound before bringing those. Uh, I don't know. I guess that that keyboard almost synthesizing sound in there with the guitar work was a uh, was was uh, very solid and uh, lyrically man there were some uh, nice uh, you know kind of funny amusing lyrics in here he notes uh, in the garden with my famous purple heart on or the day we met that's a day I won't forget in my romantic novel you will call and I'll just grovel you'll tie me up with chains and pick my brains I think about you um, and he kind of goes through obviously this guy is just infatuated with this other person who may not be reciprocating that and he notes uh through there that um even when his car breaks down and he had to run into town i think about you his dog just died my brain is fried but i think about you you know you kind of have some uh uh, not morbid lyrics, that's a bit too strong, but you know, the, the stuff's not going well for this dude, and yet he's still thinking about this other person, and uh, even on holiday somewhere far away, I think about you, and uh, you know, mixed with those uh, those keyboards in there, and uh, the Mikey's vocal delivery, man, a, a very strong uh, song uh, right here that uh, I think very well will end up amongst my favorites and so now we're going to go to the longest track on this record by a wide margin you know most of these have been in that three and a half minute range we're going to go to a seven minute track called Parallel Universe and Ian notes of this a serious uh, sound for the first 30 seconds slightly silly lyrics spirals off into a heavenly ending this was another grower on me a solid seven and a half Bit, bit eerie and intense here starting us off.
yet again to that bass work booming. And if there is, I know they live our lives out exactly in reverse. You and I could go there if you think that you could maybe get some time off work. And if you do, you never know, you'll see the sights and we could always go berserk. That even in a serious tune, it seems like uh, Mikey will throw some lyrics in there to let us know, man. Don't don't take this too seriously. I like that cool in the game got a lot.
Parallel Universe, the seven-minute epic here from David Devant and his spirit wife impressed me, man. It really did. The longer the song went on, the more I enjoyed it. And I think it's just cool to note, too, we're halfway through the record, six songs in. And it's crazy to see how uh, how, how many different types of moods and, um, you know, sounds that uh, the group can really pull off here. This was obviously a, a very serious sounding track for the first minute before, uh, you know, uh, ramping up a little bit still, obviously didn't um, go up to those, um, you know, uh, like poppy sensibilities that the first few tracks had here, but they were still able to pull off a uh, long tune like this that also had, uh, um, you know, some interesting topics of discussion while still keeping some of that cheekiness that I uh, really am enjoying by Mikey as a lyricist here. We start off asking about the concept of parallel universes, and uh, if there is, I know they live our lives out exactly in reverse. And then I found it a bit amusing when he was like, you and I could go there if you think that you could maybe get some time off work, you know, just as simple as, hey, ask off work, we could uh, hit off these parallel universes. And then he notes, uh, you'll see the sights and we could always go berserk. And then, you know, instrumentation ramped up a little bit there. And I uh, like the shout out uh, to the cool in the gang. Yet again, just showing, showing, hey, don't take us too seriously, I think. And uh, I, I appreciated that. And then he notes that uh, that there is a parallel state of mind. Something tells me that I'd better go find it before I get left behind. So still uh, have some of those serious lyrics that uh, bite you in there. And uh, he, I, I think, is worried uh, that he's just going to get left behind in life in general. And uh, I think he might be crushing on this person as well. Because he says, uh, and if you do, you never know. You'll see the sights and maybe even want me too. So maybe he's thinking if I go to a parallel universe, parallel world, that uh, this person will fall in love with me and that uh, coda at the end too was just marvelous with the, the, the you know keyboard going in um, and it, it just seemed to really crescendo to a, uh, a, a great ending so par Parallel Universe killing it right there man and uh, now we're going to go to the second half of the record starting it off with Reinvent the Wheel Ian Notes another great lyrical tour de force from Mikey wonderfully over the top unashamedly pop yet you can feel uh, the Bowie influence. Another seven and a half for Ian right here. Come on, then let's reinvent the wheel. My patent pending, please accept my deal. Something clicked inside, that's how you made me feel. Pretty please, let's reinvent the wheel. You put your best foot forward, you break a leg. The chicken or the egg Don't think too hard about what to say Cause I want our love to be a cliche I want our love to be a cliche Johnny said let's swim towards the light And you can really tell in Mikey's vocals on this, the Bowie inspiration. Put your best foot forward, you break a leg What came first, the chicken or the egg? Don't think too hard about what to say Cause I want our love to be a cliche I've got some plans they took all night to make So if it's round, then hey, that's my mistake Something picked inside, that's how you make Please, 
Get a quirky little uh, coda right here to end us off. All right, reinvent the wheel coming in, and you know it's interesting to note too. A lot of these songs have, uh, in a roundabout way, been about love and relationship, and yet packaged in a uh, non-cliched manner than you'd expect from a uh, a pop tune. And, and here yet again, have that uh, pop sound that uh, is just so welcoming, and um, but uh, you know the lyricism is constructed in a way that uh, I, I think stands uh, stands on its own and is impressive and has a bit more depth to it than. Uh, what you'd expect in a normal just a poppy little love song because we start off come on let's reinvent the wheel my patents pending please accept my deal something's clicked inside that's how you made me feel pretty please let's reinvent the wheel and then we got that really catchy chorus you know what came first the chicken or the egg don't think too hard about what to say because i want our love to be a cliche here uh, probably the most Bowie uh, sounding on the vocals from uh, Mikey. And, um, you know, I could even see Bowie pulling off a, a tune like this, man. And uh, I, I thought towards the end, the, the Foz really uh, gave a, a notable guitar riff. And so I, I thought that was enjoyable. And uh, all in all, man, just uh, an, an interesting way to, to tackle this type of subject and uh, still remain um, like, uh, I'm going to steal Ian's words, over over the top pop, man, ashamed and uh it it worked quite well um man for a, a record that has been this good up to this point it's uh but just looking i mean on spotify none of these songs have even ten thousand plays on them it's unbelievable so shout out to ian for uh you know for bringing this it's uh, been very enjoyable and uh next we're going to ballroom and uh ian says about this one a quentin tarantino opening if there ever was one ooh you know me, man. I love me some uh, some QT, so I'm curious what uh, we got. A Tale of Murder and Mystery. I'm not sure if they didn't uh, call it uh, Cluedo. Uh, think you uh, call I Clue in the USA uh, for the fear of being sued, but a brilliantly comic song. There was nothing else really quite like this in the mid-90s. It didn't feel like Britpop, even though it was pop. Ian's given this a nine. So different from even the lighter side of Britpop. Harks back more to Squeeze, Ian Dury, and The Block, Heads, or Madness. So, uh, man, with some of those names drops, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. You piqued my curiosity with that write-up, Ian. <laughs> Let's get to it. Oh, yeah. That, that Pulp Fiction sound right there. <laughs> There's someone waiting in the ballroom, in the ballroom And they're preparing to meet with their doom, in the ballroom Yeah, yeah, yeah There's a body lying in the study, in the study And his clothes are all tattered and bloody, in the study I've got something cooking in my kitchen 
that stripping that back man the group knows when to do that man to, switch things up keep it fresh to uncle joe he rolls the dice because it's his go he lifts his hand to scratch his chin because when he plays he plays to win To cousin Sarah, I pull a face to try to scare her. To Uncle Joe, she shows her cards. He says, Piss off, let's play charades. <laughs> and now I see across the table the grinning face of Auntie Mabel. I look at her, my knees go weak, her mouth a tremble, she starts to speak. Oh boy. The tension's building, ladies and gents. It was Miss Scarlet <laughs> in the ballroom, and she was using, yeah, she was using. to ballroom and uh, yeah man as the song was going yeah this is definitely a uh a, we, we just call it straight up clue here in the states man it's been ages since i uh played that game man but this uh harkened me back and just to yet again is so creative to construct a song uh, off of playing the, the game of clue and uh man uh, they they really made it work for them i thought the use of the organ in there to give a bit of that uh, uh uneasy feeling uh throughout the track was well done and uh, yet again Mikey's vocal delivery uh, was a bit quirky and aided into uh, into the yet again that mysterious type of vibe I think that they were going through throughout this track and yet still um, had a uh, had some some areas that that were catchy in here um really then just describing you know like oh there's someone waiting in the ballroom they're preparing to meet their doom you know just uh you know initially you think oh this is a uh, this is like real life somebody's really about to get it and then you know later on we figure out obviously it is the game of clue and uh you know we get the name drop of uncle joe cousin sarah auntie mabel who's it gonna be man uh uh he knows i pull a face and try to scare her to uncle joe she shows her cards and uh then it's like you know what let's just play charades type of thing but it was auntie mabel the whole time she was grinning and uh she starts to speak it was miss scarlet in the ballroom and she was using what she was using the lead piping <laughs> i thought that was just so funny man the way they were able to con construct that and uh, it all led up to to uh 
the lead piping being the murder weapon at the end, man. And uh, it, uh, it that, that was a uh, that was well done, man. That was well done. Uh, very unique, um, unique type of track that you don't see every day, man. So now we uh, are going to this is for real, ladies and gentlemen. Ian says this is one of those songs you can remember the lyrics to without trying. After a couple of listens, many boozy evenings have ended in a drunken recital of this. I can only apologize to humanity that this was ever inflicted upon you. I love this song. Wonderful ending featuring the bad pipes. Uh, Ian's going to full 10 on this. Another super catchy single, and the single video captures the performance art aspect of the band very well. A great fun story is told in this song. Well, let us cue up this video then. This is for real! Again, a very uh, artsy, impressive music video here. At least uh, keeps you intrigued and engaged. No, we don't take long. We're making it up as we go along. Having a half remembered song. When we woke up, we thought, what's the big deal? Then we remember, this is for real. This is for real. This is for real. Watching the TV with the fire. And it seems this has a bit of an Arctic Monkey sound at times. Oh boy. talk about the video first uh, yet again i enjoy how um how our 
you know artsy at points it was from the the door falling at the start to the you know the quick cuts of everybody in that tiny little room the dog uh, of course popped up <laughs> throughout the video we had the person which i found amusing watching the tv in front of the fireplace but the tv was playing the or you know just had like a fireplace on uh went good with the whole this is for real refrain that uh we had in there and um you know i had a, a bit uh, it seemed like arctic monkeys might have taken some inspiration <laughs> from this tune at certain points as well um especially as the the chorus ramped up and uh, i thought mikey yet again sounded fantastic and uh you know some some stories too just uh you know kind of throwing it back in the day uh, to people that he once knew talking about uh alan's uh mom and dad they brought him up well and you know the, all these things that alan was able to do but now they're sending him on holiday with other naughty boys um but it makes him laugh and the world laughs with him never would have guessed he got it so wrong and then uh, he moves on to a couple of uh, other lovers who are now uh, buried in a chest their father built the rockery they hit their little crime now shirley's doing magazines and daddy's doing time so just uh, these uh, stories that start one way and then there's a twist to them in every verse um was very well done and uh and like ian said man especially that chorus this is for real just uh, that melody that's instantly um um, you know, easy to latch onto, and uh, after one listen, man, you're you're ready to to sing it and uh, and just uh, be enjoying life. Uh, so, uh, all in all, man, yet another really strong tune. It definitely had single written all over it, so not surprising there. And uh, we only have three tracks left, y'all. This has been a quick uh, recording for for me, man, because the music's been so good. So we got. I'm not even going to try. Ian said the ultimate live song to close any show. It's one of uh, life's moments of existential epiphany to be in the audience singing along it's also a good laugh uh, a nine you have to be in the crowd oh okay okay let's see what we got oh, already feeling that uh you know live type of atmosphere and energy the crowd vibing But the truth's a little hazy And you know I wouldn't want to live a lie Cause I'm not even I'm not even I'm not even going to try I love that calm response with the crowd the table I'm not even going to try I want a friend of mine says David have you got the time I won't even pull my shirt sleeve up and when I see a nutter who's lying in the gutter I'm not even going to try
very much. <laughs> Dude. Feel like I'm in. Uh, feel like I'm in the venue with the the lads. Very unique. I'm not even going to try. Which uh, yet again showcases the diversity this record has. Uh, uh, framing a uh, live atmosphere here in this tune with the call and response with the crowd. Man, just made it stand is so unique and uh, just cool. Man, this song was a vibe right here, and uh, I do like the uh, just the upfront nature of the lyrics of this guy's. This guy's had it, man, and he's just being honest with everybody. I'm not even going to try. And there's a certain freedom, I think, in that that we all uh, respect, even if we wouldn't go down that route ourselves, man. He uh, he, he notes that uh, he, he doesn't even have a plan. Uh, he says, now you might say I'm sluggish, but that's a load of rubbish. Who says you've got to work until you die, you know? I, I like that. This man's just out here being free, doing what he wants to, and uh, he's, he's tired of uh, stopping uh, his tracks for the world and what they want for him. He's going to live for himself, man. So I tip my cap to that, and I just, uh, yet again, that live crowd atmosphere, the clapping at the end, it just all worked uh, quite well, and I can imagine in a... Uh, in a, a concert setting that this one was a a monster hit if you will so uh, another another big uh, big uh, thumbs up for me on that one and now we're gonna go to light on the surface Ian says quite a dark song that expands out into a powerful ballad with a fun twist lyric nicely set here in the video we're gonna watch uh, by Mikey to meshes of the afternoon by Maya so uh, let's uh, cue this uh, video up <laughs> There's a door that never closes On a room where a girl composes Tongue twisters on the concept of time And the carpet is unrolling On which we all are strolling And a clock that my mother once owned Forgets to chime mm. Yeah, this footage, man, with the knife, the black and white Kind of works perfect with the lyrics and the sound we got in this first first section here. There's a film without an ending An audience pretending To understand the meaning in the stars Perhaps it was her lover Who's working undercover Leaves a calling card in people's hearts There's a situation vacant If you need to earn some bacon Or you just need something to do to pass the time Powerful.
Sheesh. An intense video, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Light on the surface bringing it, man. And, um, yeah, I was just looking after the video ended. That's from a 1943 experimental film. Uh, how ahead of its time it was for being 1943, man. We're at the end, uh, you know, the uh, the woman was, was dead there with the mirror shattered and everything. So I, I think that uh, worked perfect with the uh, with the song, man. This is going to, man, this was one of my favorite tracks, to be honest with you. I Yet again, I'm going to harp on the uh, variety that there is in this album here. And uh, yet again, showcases how Mikey's voice can work with any type of mood that uh, the group's trying to, uh, you know, kind of exude out in in their music here i thought the the guitar tone especially um in the middle of that track was uh was quite powerful man just um there was a, a heaviness to the uh, instrumentation throughout that uh, just worked so well for me some great one-liners in here um just saying uh, at the start there's a door that never closes on a room where a girl composes tongue twisters on the concept of time and a carpet is unrolling on which we all are strolling and the clock that my mother once owned forgets to chime and uh you know we continue on until we get to the uh the chorus there's a situation bacon if you need to earn some bacon or you just need something to do to pass the time light on the surface and that's where uh mikey really kind of got into that higher register light on the surface i i think that worked uh worked fantastic and just set to that uh set to that film man it, the the black and white nature just the knife that we see at the start of the ending which was so uh you know kind of graphic i mean it just uh it just uh, really hit home and you know he mentions at the end not being adam's clone and um you know thinking you know adam you know falling in the, the garden of eden and uh it, it just made uh made you think about some stuff and i i just thought it was great man i thought it was great and uh we are now to the the final track good night ian says a great song to end the album i remember a magical live performance of this at a pub in oxford where the whole audience were singing along with the ah ah ahs and uh uh, the end and then the band lined the stairs out of the gig and shook everyone's hands. I embarrassingly in my excitement accidentally hit the vessel with my beer bottle. Fortunately he's such a nice bloke so no harm done. Song is pretty simple one that you need to experience live for the full effect. It's so only a seven for Ian here musically and uh, then at the end y'all we'll uh, wrap this album up with uh, Ian's summary as well as mine. <laughs> See the day dawning. Make a plan as you go undercover, down behind the sofa. Make a tent in the underneath. Tell the world it's over. Good night. Sleep tight. Oh, don't let the box bite. My hit those ahs.
like that, that explosion, the big wah-wah uh, sound here on the guitar. It's kind of tight. Bravo to David Devant and his spirit wife for closing us out with good night. Obviously, uh, as the name would suggest, works as that closer man a little... Uh, um, kind of a play off of that old school nursery rhyme, you know, good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Uh, that gets a name dropped in here, man. A good imagery, of course. And um, I, again, I like that ah section that stripped everything back before we really, uh, right at three minutes, boom, the guitar came energetic back in. Uh, a little bit of that use of the wah-wah pedal, it uh, sounded like. And um, uh, before we faded out and then faded uh, again to a little uh, uh, acoustic, um, you know, very lo-fi type of a coda to end us out with the last 20 seconds or so. Um, man, not song pretty self-explanatory, man. I think it worked well as a closer. And now uh, that'll take us to uh, the final thoughts of the record. I'm going to start with Ian's first, his summary. He said, I feel that the uh, glamorous theatrics of Pulp and the big orchestral sound of my life story are the closest contemporary comparison while drawing on the glam rock look and sound of early Bowie and the lyrical inspiration of Ian uh, Dury and the Blockhead. But what do I know? This was number 18 on my favorite albums of all time, and I highly commend it to anyone with an open mind. David Devan and his spear wife are infectious pop joy and have a wonderful set of fans who make every gig uh, live up to the band's catchphrase, all done by kindness well said there ian and for my favorite tunes on here i'll just go kind of in order when they appeared i'm gonna go lie detector i think the video was really a clever on that as well man i loved uh the the woman taking off the mask and uh Hey man, it was uh, it was Mikey the whole time. Uh, I'm gonna also go Parallel Universe, the long track. I thought it made the best use of uh, those seven minutes, man. I didn't know going into it just compared to what we previously had heard, you know, those three and a half minute pop tunes, but uh, they impressed me there. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, This Is For Real, uh, also Light On The Surface. I'm not even gonna try. I thought the second half of the record uh, actually rivaled the, uh, the first half. Um, so all in all, man, a lovely little record right here here that showcased a lot of different styles while still uh, seeming to have a, uh, a consistent theme and heart uh, to the band that uh, exuded some, some fun, um, that didn't take itself too seriously, even when they were talking about serious subjects. And that's a that's a tough line to, to toe, so to speak. I thought Mikey's voice was uh, pretty adaptable to a lot of these different styles as well. Great hooks. Uh, the guitar work by the Foz was uh, pretty notable as well. Catchy riffs that you need in those soaring choruses, especially in the first half of the record. Great bass work, too, by the Colonel. And uh, all in all, man, a, uh, a quite... Uh, 
quite impressive album for a band I hadn't even ever heard of. This is one of those where you're happy to have those patrons in the community, man, that can introduce uh, you to something that you likely would not have come across. And uh, hopefully uh, y'all dug it as well and uh, can get it out to a wider audience. So for me, man, on first listen, I'm going a very strong 825 on this. This was a very impressive record. It was excellent and one that uh, one that'll be on my wish list, man, if I uh, somehow see it here in a CD stores here in Texas, hopefully. But uh, yet again, man, be sure to give Ian some love in the comments for suggesting this to us. Shout out to David Devant and his spirit wife for uh, bringing in a great record with this. And let me know your thoughts on the band and this, uh, this record and your favorite songs by them in general. Always love to hear from you all. And uh, if you like this video, y'all, be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, hit that big red subscribe button. That helps us out. And if you'd like to suggest a song for us to react to or even a full record, you can check out our Patreon page, which will be showing up on the end screen here in a few seconds and also a link down below. But that'll do it for us today. Y'all stay good. It was a, a blast, this one. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Happy listening, and I will see you.